Well, hi everybody, it's Mrs. Perryman, and um, I guess we're gonna go ahead and, and get started here. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday, and hope you're, you're able to get out and enjoy the day a little bit. So we've been um, talking about stocks and sauces, and so we've made some pretty yummy things over the last few days. For those of you that have already been here this week, we have made tomato sauce. And then yesterday, uh, we made velouté sauce, which you know, those are two of the mother sauces that we've been, been talking about. And both of those recipes were quite tasty. And for those of you that haven't been here yet, that'll be here Thursday and Friday, that's what we're gonna make. Uh, day one, uh, we will make uh, tomato sauce and we are um, making some meatballs to go in that tomato sauce and we're going to put it on a hoagie sandwich that we're going to top with some provolone cheese and we'll melt that under the broiler. So I know you guys are going to really enjoy that. And then uh, on Friday, we're going to make stuffed uh, chicken breasts with velouté and the stuffed chicken breasts have um, a little bit of, of sausage uh, and some breadcrumbs and then the, the chicken is just kind of laid over uh, and then has this beautiful smooth uh, velouté uh, chicken flavored sauce that goes over so anyway I'm excited for you guys that haven't tried it yet uh, to, to get to do that because both of those are quite tasty. And then once we finish that on Friday, then we're going to be moving on, which is what we're going to talk about today, uh, is soup. And, you know, I think soup is, is about one of my favorite meals. I think I could eat soup uh, just, just about every meal. And, um, you know, soup can be, we can serve it as a first course or we can serve it as an entire meal. And so um, it, again, is, is fitting on a, on a cold winter day. It, nothing like soup to warm up your insides. But you know, there's such a thing as cold soups. Has anybody ever heard of gazpacho? Well, that is a Spanish soup that is served cold and it's kind of has a, a salsa-like uh, flavor. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, uh, or even uh, a fruit soup. Anybody ever had fruit soup before? I have a, a lovely recipe for a cantaloupe soup that is, is really yummy, served alongside of something like a chicken salad sandwich. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. Here we go. All right, okay, so so just kind of as a, a rule of thumb, whenever, you, whenever you're making soup, um, it is easy to get carried away, and, and that's kind of uh, the thing that happens to me, is I, I have a really hard time cooking for a small number of people, and so I always end up with, with enough spaghetti sauce to feed Sicily, and and the same deal with soup. There's usually enough to share with the neighbors. And so, um, but just kind of as a rule of thumb, if your soup is, is an appetizer, if you're gonna serve something else along with it, um, one quart of soup for about six adults is what will work. And you know, those quart, those are those containers, you know, that we, uh, those plastic ones that we send home things with you guys that we have left over in, that's a quart. And so if you, if you were having something else, uh, maybe like a, a sandwich or having a meal after that, um, then, then that would probably be fine. Um, but if it is the main course, you'll want a little heartier portion and one quart would be enough for probably two adults. So just kind of something to so you can kind of decide how much soup that you need to make so you're not guessing. But the thing about soup is it is great for busy families because just about anything goes in a soup. You can put even even some leftover things uh, in a soup. And the other thing that's great about soup is that honestly, it tastes really better after it's been made a couple of days and it's sat in the refrigerator because it's given 
time for the, the flavors to kind of combine. Um, and so you can just reheat that in, in the time of the service. Thank you. Okay, so um, in soups freeze beautifully. Um, they, um, if, you, if you're uh, freezing a cream based soup, um, which we'll talk about here in a minute, cream sometimes uh, when you freeze it will separate, but usually you can kind of uh, whisk, whisk it back together and it should be, uh, should be just fine. Okay, so there are two basic kinds of soup. Okay, there's the clear soups and there's thick soups. And just, just the term soup in general, soup is, is a food that can be made from all different combinations of, of vegetables. It can have meat in it. As I mentioned before, it can have fruit in it, fish. So in any of those, those kind of things that are, are cooked uh, in a liquid. So if you look at this clear soup and thick soup that we have on the slide here, over here on thick soup, you'll see some examples of that is, is uh, an example is chowder, okay? And, and we're gonna actually make a chowder uh, in a couple of days, but chowder is, is a, a thick, kind of a chunky stoop, soup, and sometimes you'll see it with seafood, Sometimes it'll be, it'll have potatoes or it might be both, might be seafood and potatoes. Sometimes it will um, uh, be just, it, it'll be potatoes and something else. Um, but the word chowder is actually a French word, uh, the French word for cauldron. And if you think about, it, it's just been Halloween, I think about a witch picking over a cauldron, but cauldron is actually the name of, of a kettle, a French kettle that, that soup is cooked in. So, so um, but uh, the first chowders that, that we experienced here in North America um, were actually brought here by uh, French uh, fishermen when they settled around in Canada. Um, let's see, and over here on clear soups, uh, you'll see minestrone soup. And minestrone is an Italian soup, um, and it has lots of veggies and some beans and peas uh, and pasta. And so it's a really hearty um, soup, uh, but it, it is a clear soup, but, but it has lots of veggies and things like that in it. So the difference between these two, if you look up here at the top, the clear soup, is broth, broth based, okay? And on these thick soups, they are either thickened with cream or a puree of, of one of the ingredients in the soup, okay? And so um, we'll, we'll kind of continue to talk about these as, as we go through here, okay? So consomme, this is, this is a beautiful clear soup. It's, it's just like a, a broth. Um, and you'll see it served sometimes in a, in a pretty little fitted bowl. And sometimes um, they will float little, uh, little tiny dices of, of carrot or a veggie on top. Um, but again, it's just a clear broth. And, and it is, you know how we made uh, chicken stock the other day? Well, it's the same kind of process, except at the end, you build something uh, called a, a raft. And this is one of your vocab words, by the way, so it might be good to pay attention here. But a raft is, is a mixture of, of uh, mirepoix, remember we talked about that, which is carrot, celery, onion. Um, and this has tomato, egg whites, um, uh, and, and some uh, turkey meat or chicken, ground chicken rather. Um, and it is formed in a, this kind of a patty that is put on top of your broth and that uh, flavors it, but it also um, collects some of the uh, impurities that are in the broth. So we get this, this uh, pristine, clear broth um, that, that is lovely and a beautiful uh, beginning to a, a fabulous meal. Okay, so that's consomme. 
All right. Sometimes in OPS, um, you can buy Consomme canned, um, and sometimes you'll see I've got a recipe for like Salisbury steak, for instance, uh, that calls for Consomme. Um, so, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty good thing to have around. All right, an onion brulee, which brulee in French means burn. Um, and so it's a burnt onion. And what has happened is, is remember onion has, has sugar, even, even savory things have sugar. And the, the brown comes from that sugar caramelization uh, from the pan. And where that has caramelized like that, it has allowed, um, it, it will impart a, a golden color uh, to whatever you're putting it in, whether you're cooking it in a soup, um, and it will also add some, some flavor to that, okay? But um, soup always tastes better, and it is a little bit more healthful if you remove the fat, um, uh, during the cooking process. And one way that you can do that is while your soup is cooking, you can just kind of spoon off the top of it uh, from just the fat that kind of comes to the top. You can just kind of spoon that off and discard it. Um, another thing uh, that you can do is set your pot a little bit off center on the burner. And what happens is that bubbling uh, will encourage the, the fat uh, to accumulate kind of on one side of the pot, which makes it a little bit easier uh, to, to scoop out. Um, and so it makes it a little bit easier for uh, removal. Hello, Jamie, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm glad you made it today. Yeah, just a couple minutes late, sorry. No worries, okay. So another way that we can, can remove uh, fat uh, from soup, uh, is to drop a lettuce leaf in it. Yes, you heard me right. You can drop a lettuce leaf in there and that will kind of help uh, to absorb some excess fat that is pooling uh, on the top of your soup. Um, another thing that you could do if you have a fat that's kind of floating on the top um, is to, to drag a clean paper towel over the top of it and that paper towel will uh, absorb some of that extra uh, oil that you don't want on there. And then and then yet another way would be to let it cool down and put it in the refrigerator. And as, as we saw with our chicken stock, how it makes that uh, kind of that fat crust uh, on the top of it. And then you can just spoon the, the, uh, that crust off of there and it helps to degrease uh, your soup. Oh, and then one last way is to, um, to float an ice cube excuse me, an ice cube in the top of your soup and that will kind of help to congeal or gather up the fat and you can scoop it out a little easier too. So, so yeah, because nobody likes uh, greasy, floaty soup like that. Okay, so moving on here. So back to that puree soup, uh, or we were talking about the different kinds of soup and under cream soup, there's puree soup or creamed soup. So, and these are thick, soups okay um a puree is going to be <coughs> a little more helpful because this soup is thickened by pureeing some of the ingredient that is in the soup whereas a cream soup is usually thickened by you remember whenever we made a roux whenever we made the bechamel the other day guys it's the same kind of thing the roux and roux remember is flour and fat and then we mix that up and kind of brown it and then add it in. And, and so there's a lot of calories in, in butter or, or whatever fat it is that you're using. And so you're introducing that and plus we're gonna add cream to it, which is also high in fat. So you can see the difference uh, in the calorie content of puree versus a cream soup. Puree is gonna be a much more uh, healthful, uh, healthful uh, version. Um, that'll still taste really nice. Um, cream soups, remember, those are going to be thickened with, with that roux like we were talking about, or sometimes it'll be like a white sauce that, that really has a roux base to it. Um, and remember, you know, the longer you cook that roux, which is that flour and fat, it's going to brown in your pan. The longer you cook it, the darker that's going to give you. There's a, a blonde roux and a brown roux. 
Um, and um, those darker roots are for things like gumbo, which we'll talk about here in a minute, okay? And that, that you use almost like a chocolatey, uh, a chocolate brown roux. Um, another way um, that we might thicken a cream soup is some, with uh, like something called a slurry. And so that'll be like a cornstarch, and then you'll add in a little bit of the liquid from the soup and kind of either whisk it or put it in a jar and shake it. And then you'll put that uh, back in in the, the cornstarch or the flour or whatever it is that you're using uh, as you cook it will thicken, will thicken up the soup. Okay, um, the cream, when you add the cream, the one thing that, that it is, uh, that's different than the puree is that cream soup, when you add cream to it, it becomes very luxurious. It becomes uh, the mouthfeel of it because of that fat that you've added to it from the cream is um, silky and lovely and, and you can't get that with the puree. And so there's, that's the reason why some people will, will choose the cream soup over the puree. The puree soups, um, again, are thickened with some of the, the veggie uh, that is in uh, the soup. And the way we do that is we just, we just um, ladle some of those ingredients out and put it in the blender. And remember, whenever you blend hot food, you could cause an explosion. And so you have to be very careful putting hot food in a blender. Um, what I usually do is offset the lid. I only fill it maybe about a third full to begin with my, my jar to the blender, about a third full, offset the lid, and then I use a towel over the top of that and then blend starting slowly. Because if you put that lid on tight, it will pop off and sling hot soup all over you and that is not good, okay? So, um, you can also like a puree if it's hot and um, but there's also a cold soup um, called gazpacho which we kind of mentioned earlier and that's the one that i described kind of similar to to salsa in flavor and that is an un, it's, it's uncooked but it's a mixture of, of tomatoes and bell peppers and uh, onions and celery cucumber and um, a lot of times you'll see this at a at mexican restaurant sometimes it'll be served with shrimp and it is delicious um, but you'll see that served cold, and sometimes it's smooth, like pureed like this, like we were talking about, um, and sometimes it'll be a little more chunky, and so it just kind of depends on uh, the restaurant and um, what it is, that, how they like to serve those things, but um, either way, um, the, the puree, again, is probably going to be a little more helpful just because it doesn't have the, the fat that the cream soup has, okay? All right, so here's bisque, okay? And bisque is a thick, rich cream soup. Usually when we talk about bisque, it will be seafood, but, but sometimes you'll see, um, you'll see poultry um, or even veggies in place of, of the seafood. Um, it used to be that bisque was thickened with rice, um, but today, really, what we see is a roux, how, how it's the flour and the fat, and we cook that and then pour in the liquid, okay? Um, on the note of fish soups, um, bouillabaisse. So, have you guys ever heard of the word bouillabaisse? It's kind of an, an interesting and funny word, um, and that is a highly seasoned uh, seafood stew uh, that's usually fish, shellfish, um, onion, uh, tomatoes, and a little white wine. Um, but bouillabaisse used to be uh, the fishmonger, whenever they would get to their port uh, and sell their fish for the day, whatever was left over and they, they took home for dinner that night, that was bouillabaisse. That was, it was like fisherman's stew and it was just at the end of the day, it was whatever was left over that they could throw in the pot to make their dinner with. Okay, so um, and here's another another dish that that is usually that's frequently seafood, but not always. Uh, it's something called gumbo. Have you guys ever heard of gumbo before? Yeah, my mom makes it. Yeah, it is so good, and it's it's like an all day process. So it takes a long time, but, but gumbo is a, a Cajun or Creole 
uh, delicacy. Um, it is from South Louisiana, so um, close to the ocean there. So that's why we see this seafood. There's also some some game. I mean, you might see rabbit, you might see uh, quail, you might see um, all kinds of different kinds of meat. And um, the the native people around that area from uh, early on were called Acadians and they were actually French settlers that came there. And so remember I talked about that, that people cook the things that they know. And so even though you may have moved to a different place, you still have the uh, the cooking techniques, you already, you, you know how to cook the things that you know, and so you're looking for things uh, that are, are similar to, to what you know, and so they brought these cooking skills with them, and so and that's it. Louisiana's low country is where we're talking about where the Creole area is, um, and also due to, um, if you remember America's history, the slave trade that was, that was prevalent in that area, there were, were, um, cooks that brought with them okra or the, the using okra to thicken things and that was from from the Africans that were brought over here and um, and and that bit of okra uh, that the starch from the okra was used to thicken soups and then there's filet powder which is a uh, something that uh, it's a pod that grows and it's dried and ground and that is um, what is also used um, to thicken gumbo with, and that is actually from the Native Americans that were here uh, and that are native to the Erica, er, area. Um, and then also um, that, remember I talked about a roux for gumbo, they use that dark brown chocolatey roux that has uh, some of the French influence. So you'll see a lot of French, uh, French American, uh, African uh, Creole influences. If you go there, um, you'll see lots of different flavor combinations, but you'll see a lot of French French influences there. Um, but gumbo again has tons of variations. You know, chicken and sausage and shrimp and oyster. Um, I mean, just about anything goes. We're going to make a, a chicken uh, version uh, of gumbo. All right. Okay. All right. So, anybody got any questions about about soup? No. Okay. All right. Well, um, I've got you a um, couple of assignments out on Moodle, everybody. And um, so, if you'll go uh, go to Moodle under soups, under stock sauces and soups, is what you click on because you know we've finished with culinary base basics so don't go there but you'll go to stock sauces and soups and if you'll go down to the bottom of that section you'll see soups it's on there and I have put on there um, the the regular PowerPoint and then I'll put this video on there if you want to watch it again and um, there's a vocab um, and then there are uh, three questions uh, that are right out of the book and so hopefully <coughs> Excuse me. You won't have any trouble uh, getting uh, getting those answered and getting those uploaded. Okay, and those will be due on Tuesday next week. <coughs> Excuse me. So, anybody got any questions about that or anything you'd like to talk about? <coughs> Okay, well, that's about all I have for you today. And so um, I'm going to stay here in case you have something you want to talk to me about. Otherwise, I will see you on your next scheduled time to be here. You guys take care. Bye. Bye.